you can't seem to get into a routine or you don't have a routine at all where you're planning and none of your plans end up panning out. You end up forgetting things and even not doing the things that you set out to do for the week. In this video, I'm here to help you with these problems and tell you how you can improve your planning, shed some light on why you're having trouble with your planning, and also give you some tips on how you can improve your planning routine. This is why your planner could not be working for you is that you don't have a clear vision of what you want your planner to do for you. Yes, it's a planner and it has a monthly layout and a weekly layout, sometimes even a daily layout, but what do you want from the planner? Why do you even have the planner? What are you going to use the planner for? These are some things that you need to ask yourself when you pick up your planner for the beginning of the year or the beginning of the month. We've already surpassed New Year's and even though we're a couple weeks into the month, it's still not too late to grab a planner. And I definitely encourage this. But when you grab it, you need to know why you're picking it up. What are you gonna use your planner for? Knowing your why will help you get to your destination. Think of it as the vision you have for your planner and how your planner is going to work in your life. Another reason why your planner may not be working for you is because you could not even have a routine for your planner or maybe the routine you have is a little too difficult. Do you have a planner routine? That is a question to ask yourself. Thinking about your planner routine, once again, you need to remember what you want your planner to do for you. You also need to remember how you want to feel when you pick up your planner. If you want it to be a relief for your day, if you want it to be a place where you can go and get some guidance for the day, if you want it to be a safe haven, maybe even like journal-like where you can write down your thoughts and your feelings for the day. Either way, you need to have a routine. You need to know when I pick up my planner, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. I'm going to look at certain areas of my life and these are the areas I'm going to write down. I'm going to take time to assess. I'm going to maybe do a brain dump. I'm going to maybe write a to-do list. But having a routine when you pick up your planner will give you guidance for your planner. You'll know what your planner is there for and what you're going to use it for in the future. You also don't want to overcomplicate your routine because that's something that will just bog you down when you, as you keep going with it. Your routine doesn't need to have 25 different steps. It can have a simple three steps if you want, or it can have 10 steps. Either way, whenever you get to the point of it feeling too overbearing or too complicated, stop immediately and reassess the whole routine. Bring it back down to the bare bones, the basics of what you want your planner routine to be and start there. <laughs> One last reason why your planner cannot be working for you is that you don't have a focus within your planner. Sometimes saying that your planner is there to guide your life is just a little too broad. Your appointments as well as your everyday tasks in your planner together, that can actually be a little too much and which also can deter your planner working for you. If you know that you're going to your planner to look at your daily thoughts from the day before, or if you know that you're going to your planner to look at the events you want to plan in the future. Either way, your planner needs to have a focus. If you've ever Ever watched a planner video on here like from one of those really good planner gurus you know the ones that have like eight different planners sectioned out in one planner yes that's crazy and it's a little overwhelming however that works for them so we're not going to knock it right but what we can learn from that is they have planners for every focus of their life I'll link a girl now below. I honestly don't even know her name and I don't even watch her videos that much. But one of the main things I realize about her planner is she sections it out for each area in her life. She has a, a planner for her faith. She has a planner for her work. She has a planner for her house. She has a planner for, I think, even her children. Either way, each of it has a focus. This is something that you definitely want to think about when you pick up your planner. I'm definitely not saying you need to have 12 different planners because I personally don't have that however my planner does have a focus I know when I pick up my planner what the focus is for that planner I'm gonna tell you the things that you can do to make sure your planner is working for you first have a vision. Love a good vision board. I encourage you to take time to make a vision board. But even if you don't, you need to have a vision for your planner. What is your planner going to do for you? If you know what the destination is, you can find a way to get there. And that's all your vision is. Same thing with your planner. If you know what your planner is going to do for you, you can make a path to get there. Next, I want you to look for inspiration. And this is not searching YouTube, finding every single planner girl that you love and copying what she does. 
No, look at those videos for inspiration. Watch them and see the things that you like and also note the things that you don't like and say, okay, this is not what I wanna do for my planner, but I definitely wanna do this. How can I incorporate it into my routine? This will help you be excited about picking up your planner and also help you when you're building that habit, okay? It's a reward to pick up my planner and to put my to-do list down. So I'm gonna be excited when it's time for me to do that. Speaking of time, you want to create a simple routine, especially simple when you're starting. You don't want it to be too complicated because you don't want it to deter, to deter you from using your planner. This is the routine I suggest you start with. Of course, you can change it and add to it and make it more, but definitely think you should start with a very simple routine. First, you need a time of the week. You're going to go to your planner to plan out your week or to look over your monthly overview. This is when you're going to set up your monthly overview, overview which you only have to do once a month. And then also you're going to look at the week as a whole. You need a time of day for planning. This is when you're going to sit down at your planner and you're going to plan your day. Third, you need a time for checking in on your plans. This is when you sit down at your planner and you say, okay, this is what I had planned for the day. Did I do those things? Do I need to add something in? This area is a little bit, uh, it has a little bit of leeway because you can also do this throughout the day. If you are in one stagnant place, maybe you work from home, or even if you're out at work and you're gonna use your planner for work, you should be looking at the list and checking in on it, checking off the boxes, making sure you assess the things that you wrote down for the day. Either way, you need to have a time when you're going to do that. So I suggest 30 minutes for the reset. This is at the reset at the beginning, which can include the monthly reset as well as your weekly reset. Reset meaning reflection as well as setting up for the week. And 30 minutes should be enough time. If you need a little bit more, that's fine. But don't go over, I wouldn't say don't go over 50 minutes. Once again, in the beginning, you need your routine to be simple and not bogged down so you don't get overwhelmed by it. You're doing your time for the day for planning and time for checking in a good 10 minutes is all you need for those times say 10 minutes to sit down and look at your plan for the day or take 10 minutes to sit down and set your plan for the day either way it's not a lot of time you need to put into your planner but when you do put time in for it it is going to make it successful Lastly, I just want to share with you how I plan and how I use these tips in my everyday planning life and routine. I have two ways of planning. One is physical and one is digital. So my physical way of planning is I have, I have a physical planner and I also have a notebook. Within my physical planner, I have my to-do list. I also have like an overview of my month. I point out specific days of the month that I need to remember as I go through the month. And then I also, within my daily or within my weekly view, I have those items put on there as well, like from the month, transfer to the week, and then I have my to-do list. And then I also put in like everyday little things that I need to remember. These are usually things that I automatically remember. I know that Thursdays are dance days for my daughter. I automatically remember this. However, I might not remember, oh, I need to grab her dance shoes because we need to get ready for the recital or something like that. So I'll put that little note in there as well. But that's what I use my physical planner for. As far as my notebook, I will use these this for brain dumps as well as if I need to write down some plans and I I find it much easier to write down a plan rather than to type out a plan because I feel like it's more fluid. It's literally going from my mind right down to my hand and I'm writing it down in the book and I'm just getting it out on paper. This is much easier for me. I say take some time to really look into what's easier for you. If it's easier for you to type out something, use the computer, but if, if paper works best, don't hesitate from having some type of paper journal always with you in your bag, by your bed, so you can write down certain things. Now, I don't actually put plans in here. Mostly I put thoughts, things I wanna remember, ideas that I have, something that I wanna research, something that I want to budget out, stuff like that. And I include this in my planning routine because when I go to write my daily or my, my weekly plan out within my planner, sometimes I have notes in here that I want to add in or places that I want to go look 
a look or check out something like that so that's why this is essential and i consider it being a part of my planner routine i also have a digital portion of my planner routine that includes google calendar i love google calendar because you can easily put in things that you do every single week and then just push repeat and then it will repeat it every single week and then when you go through and take the 10 minutes to do your weekly setup you all you have to do is move those little things around i've shown this multiple times and on my channel but i'll link a video down below that talks about time blocking which is a technique that i use for planning and that's why it's easy for me to move my week around and just set my week up and i don't have to think about it too much when it's simple and easy it makes me want to keep going back to it and keep using that technique also on also digitally i use google sheets but this is only if i'm planning something that has a numerical value so for example a budget to me i consider budgeting and planning are literally the same thing except for you budget your money and you plan your time so but to me they're they're honestly the same thing i'm planning what i'm going to do with my money which is a budget so um but if i'm doing anything numerical i'll just make a digit uh, i'll just make a google sheets for it and then lastly of course i use notion now notion is how i set my focuses for my planning i don't really use the reminders of notion but i do use the calendar portion because it helps me when i sit down for the week and okay within my weekly plan i have to plan what i i get to plan what i'm going to film for the week for example for my youtube channel so within my notion i have a content planner and i go to my content planner and i can see all the videos that i have idea wise but then i also can move them around on the calendar of when i want them to come out or when i want to post them or when i want to film them or anything like that that is how i separate my focuses so when i talked about making sure you have a focus for your planner this notion is a great way to separate them out and still have it in one area because I have a content planner. I also have a reading planner. Um, what other kind of planner do I have in my Notion? Um, 12 week year plan. So within Notion, I can break it all out and still have it all in one place. I am definitely going to do a Notion tour very soon. I'm going to, I want to do it in the month of January because I think the month is all about just setting yourself up for the year and so i wanted to share that with you guys how i'm doing that so don't worry it's coming soon it's coming this month it's coming in january that is all that i use for my planning so like i said two two physical books which are my planner and my journal and then pretty much two digital programs google and notion if you have any questions about this and setting up a planner routine please leave me a comment down below but i want to say thank you for watching this video if you are having a hard time setting up a planner routine i hope this helps you give you some guidance and helps you put you put you in the right direction so you can make your planner work for you thanks for watching this video guys if you haven't seen my previous video and how i set up my 12 week plan i will actually link that on the screen for you and if you haven't subscribed to my channel you can do so by hitting my face down below thanks for watching this video guys and i'll see you in my next one bye